so blessed me. It so blessed me on last Sunday. I had to hear it one more time. He he added a little gravy to it this morning, though. Uh, he had uh, he had Sister Brooke Alford come and play the violin for us. Let, let's give him a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. Can we can we give our babies a hand clap of praise today also? I thank God. I thank God for our babies. You know, a lot of churches don't do that no more. They don't, they don't have Sundays that they dedicate to their children. Right? They like to stick with protocol and procedures. But, 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 but you know, uh, Brother D, you blessed me today when you came up to, to do your part because that's what we try to teach. We try to teach that, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a robber's rule of order and, and procedures, but when the Spirit shows up and you have an opportunity to tell God thank you, See, you have to have a personal testimony to be able to really lift your hands up and say, Father, I, I don't care who knows, I don't care who sees me, but right now I want to make it personal and say thank you for all you've done for me. Do I have any thankful people in the house this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. And, and, and I don't know about you, but I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place today. And, and I'm, I'm not going to hold you long. I got this word I want to just deposit into your spirit. We'll just let that keep playing. I, I love that, man. I, hey, man, it's just, it's, 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 it's just a little piece of heaven to me. That's it. Uh, hey, man, hey, man. So if you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, if you would turn with me. Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Can't find Second Samuel. It's right after First Samuel. It's in there, I promise you, it's in there. My goodness, my shield. <laughs> Don't you know that if God wasn't a shield for you, the things that would have took, can, can, I, can I just take a moment because I'm going to read the verse, but the Lord was a shield for me. That means that there was some stuff that the enemy had planned, but God stopped it. I'm, I'm not saying you didn't go through anything, but you didn't go through everything that you could have gone through. God was a shield for you. Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 7. My goodness. The word of the Lord reads, now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around that the king said to Nathan the prophet see now I dwell in a house of cedar but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains then Nathan said to the king go do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. Can somebody say amen? amen? Last week we started our series on capacity 101. Last week we talked about emotional capacity that if we're going to stand firm, if we're going to stay focused and remain balanced, we have to create some, some room in our psyche, some room in our mind. And so we have to detox ourselves of some things that's taking up mental space. But this Sunday I want to talk to you about people capacity, making room for covenant relationships, because there's relationships in your life that could be getting in the way of what God has for you in the covenant capacity, so we want to make room for covenant relationships. Father God, we thank you today for your grace and mercy. We thank you just for your presence in this place today. We thank you for our children, for our babies, and we lift them up before you even now. Father God, you said 
in your word that we should forbid them not, Lord God, to come. And, and we dedicate this day for them to tell you how much they love you. It's a testament to the families that are here today that they've trained them up in the way that they should go. That when they're older, they won't depart from it. And so, Father God, we know that their voice was music to your ears today. Now we ask, Father God, that you will reward us by allowing your Holy Spirit to dwell in this place. Speak to us from the volume of the book. Strengthen our hearts and our minds and our spirits that we may be strong and that we may continue to stand no matter what the enemy tries to throw at us. We we'll forever give you the praise, glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Milk. Uh, somebody say people capacity. Hallelujah. Um, last week when I was flying back to Atlanta from, from D.C., I was at the airport and I was checking uh, my email messages. And when I logged in, I noticed that I would received a warning message. It was a mailbox quota notification. And it read, Pastor Noel, it said that your email account is almost full. It says your email account currently uses 82% of its capacity. Then it gave me a warning and it said, you should remove some emails from the mailbox as soon as possible in order to prevent the loss of future emails. It was letting me know that if I didn't remove the old emails that I received from people, that, that I, 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 I stand at risk to miss some more important emails from some important people that I've been waiting to hear from. It could be that they're trying to get in touch with me, but they can't reach me because my capacity is full. Brothers and sisters, please, I'm not going to hold you long today. Uh, I need you to understand that whenever we are about to reach full capacity, God would give us signs. He would give us signals. He would give us warnings to let us know that we need to remove some stuff because our capacity is almost full. M many of us, we we're familiar with the saying, uh, bad company corrupts good character. H have you ever uh, had your child go off to school? And uh, it seems like they were going to have a good day. And then when you go to pick them up, the teacher said they, they were off the chain today. The they, they got into some of everything. They said some of anything. And it messed you up. Watch this because you know that that's not how they act at home. But, 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 but it seems like when they get to school, they begin to assimilate with the character and the demeanor of the children at their school. Well, let's leave the kids right now. Let's go to grown folks. Uh, have you ever... Have you ever noticed that certain folk change when they're around certain folk? I, I can't get no help this morning. I mean, it could be family folk. We have no problem. But now that your mama here, you acting like I can't get no help in here. Uh-huh, yeah. Come here. Let me talk to you. They... They change. Wives, haven't you noticed that sometimes your husband is different when he hangs around certain friends? I can't get no help in here today. But because we begin now to assimilate. I, I, I believe that to be true, and, and I believe it because, hear me, if you were to conduct an autopsy on the relationships of your past, you would discover that you had two types of people in your life. You had some people in your life that God sent, and you had some people that you selected. People that were sent by God were sent on a holy assignment, but people that you selected yourself could have a hidden agenda. People that God sent, they don't have an agenda. People that God sends to you, please hear me, they're there with you because they're on assignment. They don't want nothing from you. They just want to see you win. They don't, they, they don't try to hurt you. They don't try to stab you in the back. Why? Because they realize that they are on assignment from God. I taught you last TNT, a few TNTs ago, that watch this, that if you're not assigned to a person, no matter how hard you try, you can't help them. But when God assigns somebody to you, see, the people that God sends, they make you better. 
you can recognize these people. You love to be in their presence. You, you feel better when you get to work and they come in. It just brightens up your whole day. When they walk in the room, just, just by them being there, it makes you feel better. You love to be in the space with them. And then there are some folk that when you see them, they make you bitter. Uh, I can't get no help in here today. That when they come in, you just start shaking your head. And when they call your name, you just say, what do they want now? I wish I, okay, you, you ain't got to say nothing because you, they might be sitting on your road. So just wink at your boy this morning. But, 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 but that, that, that's why we got to have people capacity. Somebody say people capacity. In some folk, we need to get out of our space. Now, we do have to have some friends. Now, God want us to have people in our lives. Why? Because, hear me, saints of God, God is going to bless us through people. When you ask God for blessings, God will bless you through people. There is something called an anthropomorphic term. An anthropomorphic term is when the Bible says the hand of the Lord touched me or the hand of the Lord was upon me. It is an anthropomorphic term. It's not literally the hand of God being upon you. It's, it's, it's giving you an idea of what it feels like when the presence of God is there. And, but, but, but there are some physical people, watch this, that God brings into your life. When you pray and you ask God for a blessing, God will bless you through people. The Bible says, the old King James Version says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Watch this, shall men give into your bosom. There are some things that God wants to give to you that you, you, you got to get into the right relationships because God is sending them through people. God has assigned someone to your life. And it could be that they, ca they haven't gotten to you yet because when they came, are you ready for this? Somebody was sitting in their seat. They're trying to get to you, but they can't get to you because you got some other folk around you. And don't you know that if you have the wrong people around you, they will run the right people off? I can't get no help in here. I need to talk to somebody because you've been praying about something. God is trying to send it. But every time he tries to send it to you because you got the wrong people around you. Uh, Y'all done got quiet on me. I, I knew, I knew, Pastor Liggins, that when I got right here, it was going to be quiet. Because God says, watch this, saints. I'm trying to get to you, but you got some folk around you that you need to move out the way. There's, there's some groups and some cliques that's leading you the wrong way. It's taking you down a road that I did not intend for you to go down. Have you ever uh, encountered somebody in life and you were so blessed by them that you asked the question, where have you been? I need you to understand some saints of God. Please, please hear me. God didn't just create them. He didn't just prepare them. He just hadn't sent them yet because you got too many folk around you. Have you heard some folk that, that, that would tell you, you know, I want to come see you. I want to come spend time with you. But, 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 but if Helen is going to be there. Okay, you may be Helen. You may be Helen if you ain't saying nothing this morning. I'm, try I'm trying to talk to somebody in here. And God is trying to create capacity. Somebody say capacity. Here it is. So here it is. I, I want to use the life and the story of Nathan and David as a backdrop to reveal to you this morning, hear me, some qualities of a covenant relationship. Yeah, uh, covenant relationship, there's qualities. It's not based on a person's physical pulchitude. It's not based on how they look on the outside. It's not even based on the person's resume. See, you're messing up because you're making relationships based on the wrong thing. It's deeper than that. It's, it's deeper than what it looks like. It's not based upon where they live in and what kind of car they're driving and what kind of suit they're wearing. No, it's deeper than that. David going to help us find it this morning. My resident theologians will remember that David was a shepherd boy, that he was out there keeping his father's sheep before he became the second king of Israel. And uh, Nathan was a prophet. Nathan was a prophet that served during the reign of David and during the reign of Solomon. And the first biblical recorded meeting of David and Nathan, he, hear me this morning, it, we, we're introduced to it in 2 Samuel here in our text. It was during the time that David came to Nathan because he had a desire to build God a house. 
And, and David wanted to build God a house, so he came to Nathan, who was not only his prophet, but Nathan also was his friend. And he says to Nathan, he says, he says, see now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside ten curtains. Can we stop right there for a moment? Because David is sitting here. P picture this with me. David is sitting here, and he's looking around at how blessed he is. And he says, I'm living in the house of cedar. I have everything that a man could want in life. But David allowed himself to remember when he was a shepherd boy, when he didn't have anything, when his father didn't even recognize him. He was out there keeping the sheep. Nobody even acknowledged him. David remember when his enemies were at him trying to kill him. David remember when his own brothers didn't even want to be with him. And now he's sitting up there. He's no longer in the fields. He's in the palace. And he's looking around and looking at how God has silenced all of his critics and all of his enemies. He's looking around at the fact now that he has servants. He can tell them go and they go and come and they come. And he's beginning now to think. And he said, wait a minute. I'm looking at the Ark of the Covenant out there. And I'm realizing that I'm sitting here blessed. And the Ark is behind ten curtains. Have you ever stopped to look around your life? at how blessed you are when you do that is the first thing that comes to your mind is it a tendency to tell God thank you for all that he's given you if you look back you ain't always been as blessed as you are today I dare you to let your mind go back when you couldn't pay your bills and you couldn't feed your children and you didn't know how you were gonna make it but God do, do I have any thankful people in the house today David says, David says, let, let me build my case here. David says, he says to Nathan, he says, listen, Nathan, it's in my heart to do something good for God because God has been so good to me and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Nathan says to David, he says, go, I got your back. He says, do all that is in your heart to do. Because hear me, saints, the quality of a covenant relationship is that the person will support your vision and pray for it. Uh, a lot of visions have died because they were revealed to the wrong person. But David said, here it is. He said, listen, I have this thing in my heart to do for God. And Nathan says to him, as a supportive friend, do all that God has placed in your heart to do, and the Lord will be with you. But then he prayed for him. And the Bible says that when David prayed, that the Lord spoke to him that night. And God told David, told, told Nathan, when Nathan prayed, God spoke to Nathan and said, listen, go and tell David, watch this, you gave him the wrong information. You, you told him to go ahead and build a house, but go and tell David that the Lord said that although he wanted to build me a house, I appreciate that, but David shall not build me a house. But just, 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 to, just to show David how, how blessed I am that I'm in his heart, tell David I'm going to build him a house, but he should not build me a house. You let David know that I'm going to use his son. I'm going to use his children to build me a house. Tell David that he's to get everything together, but he's not going to build it. I'm going to let his son build it. I need to talk to somebody this morning because there's some things you've been praying and asking God for. You may not see it in your life, but God wants me to let you know he's going to do it through your children. Uh, somebody ought to be excited in here today. God said there's some things that you've been praying for that he's going to bring those things to pass in the life of your... Don't you know that you had a great-great-grandmother that prayed for what you're enjoying today? She couldn't go to school, but her grandbaby went to school. She never owned a house, but her child owned a house. Can we take a moment and thank God for those that came before us that laid away... Here it is, he said, here it is, he said, tell, he said, Nathan, I need, you, I need you to go back to David and tell him that you messed up, that you told him to, to go ahead and build a house, but tell David, I don't want him to build a house, I'm, I'm going to let his seed build the house. And First Chronicles tells us that David is the one that got all the material together. When Solomon was about to build the house, David got it all together. So that was the first biblical account of David and Nathan. And see, but the second, the second biblical account, here it is, it, it, it's, it's not long that we discover, watch this, that David could not handle the responsibility of power. Yeah. Faith and faithfulness are related. Anyone that trusts God, hear me, saints of God, they rely on him, but they also, hear me, saints, are faithful to him. And sometimes the real test of faithfulness is favor. 
Okay, that meant, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, sometimes the real test of authenticity of your faithfulness is when God favors you. Anybody can come to church and shout when you need something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to lift your hand up when you want God to help you pay these bills or you want God to help you raise these children. But the real test is when God puts his favor on you. And I need about 23 folk that can say, Preacher, I didn't come to church today just because I need something from God. I came to give something to God because God has been so... If God don't do nothing else, I come today to give him a praise, to give him a worship because of what he's already done. It is. It is. And so, and so here is David. David, David, David's high up now. He's, he's the man now. He's, he's the king. And he's in the palace. But when God starts blessing you and you get promoted, on, you're the supervisor now. You can't speak to nobody. You just look at your Bible. You're the manager now. You, you're making more money than your mama. So now you think you're better than your mama. You make, I can't get no help in here. You're making more money than your granddaddy ever made. So now you don't even call your granddaddy. And God said, can I trust you with favor? Because if I can't trust you with favor, here it is. I'll take it back. And so here it is. Here it is. I'm, I'm just building my case. And so the second biblical meeting of David and Nathan, it wasn't a good meeting. It wasn't a good meeting because... Um, Nathan now has to confront his friend about his indiscretions with Bathsheba. He now has to confront his friend and his king about the things he's done with Bathsheba and with him trying to, to cover up the fact that he had her husband killed. The second quality of a covenant relationship is this. They won't leave you when you're in a mess, but they will confront you in your mess. I can't get no help in here because you want a lot of yes people on your side. You, you want folks to tell you that everything you've done is good and everything you do is right. But no, you need some real folk that's going to look you in your eye and say, honey, I love you, but you done messed up. Nathan, he looks at David and he says, David, here it is in no uncertain terms. I love you too much to lie to you. You have blood on your hand. Because David, after he had Uriah killed, he was walking around as if nothing happened walking around as if he hadn't done anything. And Nathan had to come to him and says, I'm coming to you because I'm your friend. I'm not judging you, but I'm your boy, and I got to tell you the truth. I wish I had somebody in here. You think you got away with it, but God sent me here to tell you that God saw everything that you did. And I wouldn't be your friend if I didn't tell you the truth. And because I'm your friend, David, I'm not going to tell you the truth in front of everybody. No, I'm going to tell you in private because a good covenant friend won't put you on front street. I can't get no help in here. But they will call you to the side. And they will say, you were wrong when you did that. Uh, I, I wish I had somebody here that knows what it feels like to have a good covenant friend. Here it is. He tells him in private. What it is that God was concerned about. The Bible says in Proverbs 27 and 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend. God sent Nathan, watch this saints, to David because God knew that David would listen to Nathan. Whenever God is trying to get to your heart, he will always send somebody you trust. If God, listen, if, if I don't know you and I don't trust you, you can't tell me. Y'all don't want to be real in here. I'm trying to help you. Here, here, here it is. Here it is. God is not going to send you to tell me. God knows I don't trust you. He knows I don't know you. If God is trying to get to my heart, he's going to send somebody that I know and somebody that I trust. So if I'm dealing in sin, God is not going to send somebody that's dealing in the same sin I am to tell me I need to get it straight. So if, you, if God's showing you some sin, it ain't my sin he's showing you. It might be your sin. I can't get no help right through him. He sends Nathan because he knows David is going to listen to Nathan because God is trying to get to David's heart. And so he sends somebody. Don't you know not everybody is going to listen to you? There are some folks I've been preaching to for 10 years, and they still ain't done what I told them to do. 
I can't get no help in here. Watch this. Because God has to send some. When God is trying to get to your heart, he'll send somebody that's close to it. Somebody that's not afraid of you cussing them out. Somebody afraid of you saying, well, I ain't going to speak to you no more. You know why? Because I'm on assignment. If you stop speaking to me, then that's, that, that, that's too bad for you. Because God has some blessings he's trying to get to you through me. And so God will send somebody. He will send somebody so that he can get. He sent Nathan so he could get back through David's heart. Because David was so deeply engulfed in sin. Watch this. That he stopped listening and hearing from God. So God had to send somebody to help open up David's heart again so God could speak to him. He sent Nathan, not only to tell David what he was doing wrong, but he sent Nathan to tell David that although you've done wrong, God still loves you. Because a good covenant friend won't just tell you what you did wrong and walk away. They will remind you that God is still on your side. And they will tell you, I'm going to stay right here and pray with you. I wish I had some good friends up in here until God brings you out of that situation. Is there anybody in here that's ever had a Nathan in their life? Somebody that's not afraid to come to you and say, listen, God said he's not appreciative of the things that you're doing. But God said if you get right and turn around, then he will bring you out. So he sends, he sends Nathan to David. Nathan, says Glenda, talks to David. And because David trusts Nathan, he didn't even try to fight it. David says, I have sinned. And then Nathan goes away. Because a true friend ain't always got to be there. <laughs> For you to know that they're there. A true friend will come and deliver what God told them to deliver and leave it alone. They won't deliver it in a threat. They, 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 they won't say, if you don't do this, this way. No, they will say, God told me, tell you what you're doing and what you have done is wrong. And I'm only telling you this because I love you. And Nathan came and told David what God said. David fell out on his knees. And he said, I've sinned. I've... I've I've been blessed to have a few Nathans in my life, and one of them was uh, Elder Chad Rivas. He was, uh, he, he, he would always just keep it real. And that's, that, that's, what, that's what I love about Elder, Elder Rivas. He, he, he would pull you to the side, and he and I have had some conversations, and see, because see, just because you're the pastor don't, don't mean you make all the right decisions. But you need to have somebody beside you that's going to pull you to the side and say, uh, have you considered this? Last time, and I'm done, that David talks to Nathan. It was around the book of Kings. David now is getting ready to die. And, and he's getting ready to die, and uh, his son Adonijah sees that David is getting ready to die, so now Adonijah tries to come and take over the kingdom. And as he's trying to take over the kingdom, Bathsheba, David's wife finds Nathan because hear me saints your spouse knows who your real friends are <laughs> they don't want to hear me don't you they don't want to hear me Yo, you, you, you better start listening when your spouse tell you something because they, they know who your if you ain't married your mama and daddy know who your real friends are because they see stuff you can't see but Sheba go find, she, she, she goes and she finds Nathan and she says, listen, you got to help me here because Adonijah saying he's king. And now Abiathar, the priest that was with David, now he's taking sides with Adonijah and has anointed him king. So now Nathan comes to David. I'm almost where I'm going. He, he comes to David and he says, David, this is what's going on. And you said your son Solomon is going to be the king. Nathan came and told David what the word on the street was about him. A true covenant friend won't let you find out through a third party. A true covenant friend, 
you would never have to say to them, that's what they said about me and you knew? I can't get no help in here. Because here it is, here it is. If they come to you and tell you what somebody else said about you, you should ask them, what did you say? I can't get no help in here. I can't, I can't. Because if you've opened the door that they feel like they can come to you, I tell people all the time, I tell people all the time, listen, don't, don't come to me, tell me nothing, and then tell me, don't tell your wife. Huh? But you better not want to tell me because I'm going to go tell her. Baby, guess what they said? I can't get no help in here. Here it is. Here it is. Nathan, Nathan could not sleep until he knew his covenant friend was all right. Oftentimes when I travel, I don't sleep well. And the reason I don't sleep well is because I like to wake up and I like to touch and see if my wife is there. And if I touch and she's not there, then I, I get concerned, like, wh wh where's she at? Shit. So, but, but, but if I touch and she's there, then, 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 then I can go to sleep because I know even in my sleep, she got my back and I got hers. But, 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 but if you sleep better when they gone, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. I ain't going to touch that because I could preach that. I could preach a whole 35. If you get your best sleep, <laughs> when they, <laughs> I can't get no help. Do me a favor, touch your neighbor, ask her, how'd you sleep last night? How'd you sleep? You better not answer them up in here. You better not, you better not say nothing. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I'm done. Our baby's got to go home. Here it is. Nathan let David know what was going on. And because Nathan let David know what was going on, he gave David enough time before he died to anoint the real king, Solomon, as his successor. Because a true friend, a true friend will stick with you even when you're on your deathbed. And so here it is. Nathan was such a good friend to David that David named Pastor Noah one of his sons, Nathan. And David was so touched by his friendship with Nathan that now he knows what it takes to be blessed. So much so that he penned it in Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. Planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in this season. Do, do I have any Bible readers in here? My prayer for you, we're going home, is that God will assign a Nathan to your life. That's my prayer for you, is that God will assign a Nathan to your life so you have somebody that's going to be with you through thick and through thin. If you don't have one, it's not because God has not prepared one. It could be because you need to create capacity for them to get to you. I want you standing on your feet all over the building. One of, the things that I, one of the things that I love about my relationship also with Pastor John, we've been, we've been best friends for about 30, 32 years. And he had no problem telling me when I was wrong. Even when I was in church and he wouldn't. <laughs> I'm the one in church, he wouldn't even go in church. We playing spade and I'm in church. And he said, yeah, doc, but you wrong. I can't get no help in here. Because you don't need anybody that's going to agree with you all the time. I want every head bowed in this place. Father God, we come before you today. And like David, Lord God, it is our desire for you to get the best out of our lives. And Father God, if we're living in a way, if we've done something that we've so covered up, 
if we, Lord God, are not living the, the abundant life that you want us to live and serving you the way that you want us to serve, Father God, reveal it to us. I pray over every bowed head in this place, Lord God, that you would assign a Nathan to them, someone that they would listen to, someone that they can open their heart up to, that they can share your word, somebody that's faithful to you, Lord, and loyal to them, somebody that they will trust, that when they bring your word to them, they will receive it. And so, Father God, we pray today that you will continue to order our steps, forgive us of our sins, strengthen us in the areas that we're weak, We'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for creating capacity in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise all over the building. Pastor Luke, man of God, pass, pass the Luke, man of God, pass the Luke, man of God, man the Bible.